Ladies and gentlemen, I got tons of comments in the last video talking about the board of directors, the three of them that stepped down yesterday, what this means, if this is a bad sign for the business, if this is possibly a good sign for the business. You guys are going to want to stay tuned to hear exactly what I personally think is going on here. I've been investing in the markets for over five years now, and there is definitely a sign to pick out from this and I want to go over that with you guys, as well as talk about SoFi potentially being bought out. This is a rumor that is starting to go around a lot more, and I think it actually could make some level of sense. And I want to go over that for you guys. This video will directly affect your investment and your money, so you want to stay tuned through the whole entire thing. Let's skip the rest of the intro. Let's get into the info. Let's get to it. So, SoFi stock was down about 7.2% today, down half a percent. And as you guys already know, this is because SoFi stock guided down, and we're just going to read this right here just so you guys are on the same page if you are not aware of why SoFi stock is down so much today. So it says, SoFi's updated adjusted net revenue and adjusted EBITDA guidance for full year 2022 is $1.47 billion and $100 million respectively, a reduction from previous guidance of $1.57 billion and $180 million respectively. So they guided down about $100 million, which sounds like a big number, and 100 million is a decently sized number, no matter what it is. But on the grand scope of things, it's not a huge guide down. This was really a justified move down in SoFi stock. They guided down about 10%. The stock fell about 10%, give or take. So not too crazy information right there. They still kept their net revenue uh, guidance of 280 to 285 million and zero to 5 million adjusted EBITDA for the first quarter of 2022. So it looks like they're getting very close to being profitable. Now, a lot of you guys didn't even care about that. I got so many comments on the last video. What is going on as far as these directors that are leaving? Because one director leaving, cool, fine. But three of them leaving announced on the same day is a little bit interesting. Now, that's what we need to talk about. And there's really two different ways uh, that I like to look at this because I've seen it play out like this all of the time. And you got to look at this with some kind of perspective here. And usually when it's one director from any certain company you could say hey that guy probably made a lot of money and he just wants to go enjoy his life which could be the case for these three people or they could have disagreements about things that are going on in the business it doesn't necessarily mean that the business is shady it doesn't mean the business is suffering it could simply be a disagreement or on the other hand these three people got offered better opportunities which all of those things are possible. What I would tend to align with is probably they didn't see eye to eye on a certain things. Now, this has sparked up a lot of controversy and rumors about a potential buyout for SoFi stock. And I want to give you guys kind of the good and bad with this. And I just want to say, first and foremost, the good news is if SoFi did get bought out, which I don't want them to get bought out, that is not in my game plan. I think this is a 10x stock in the next five years. So I don't want this to happen, but there could be some short-term positives for the stock and how buyouts work. If you guys are unfamiliar is say a company like uh, square, let's say that would probably be a pretty reasonable company to uh, look to buy out SoFi to diversify their business, get access to the investing platform, all of that. We have some news to go over as far as SoFi invest as well. We'll talk about all of that later into this video, but there's usually the buyout price and SoFi stock. Let's just go ahead and take a look at it. SoFi stock, I believe, and I actually did buy some options today for next week, but SoFi stock is trading at $7.39 billion market cap, which is not that high right in the grand scope of things uh a company could buy sofi stock very easily but sofi is not going to sell out for what they're worth right now they're not going to undercut themselves like that sofi stock used to trade at 25 so if i were to put a buyout price tag on sofi i would say it would roughly come in around 20 dollars per share it might come in around 15 dollars per share so a majority of you guys would make money on that trade hopefully it does not happen but what would actually need to happen if there was a buyout for sofi stock after all you've heard a lot of uh, talks amongst other companies about buyouts look at just spirit airlines ticker symbol save they just offered to uh get bought out by uh what was it 
JetBlue, JetBlue, sorry was not coming to my head right off top. So you've, you've seen a lot of buyouts here recently. And so far stock has fallen enough where it's attractive. It's, it's a very attractive buyout for any company. That's why it's an attractive stock for all of us, right? It, it makes sense. So I don't necessarily want it to get bought out, but what would need to happen if that were the case? So voting rights of common stock ownership. Some companies grant stockholders one vote per share, thus giving these shareholders with a greater investment in the company a greater say in corporate decision making. Alternatively, each shareholder may have one vote, regardless of how many shares of company stock they own. So I believe SoFi stock it goes off of how many shares you own. That's typically what happens. So that's where you get into the situation where a lot of people don't like to invest in certain companies that are over, you know, 51% owned by one entity because essentially they would have all of the say. If SoFi was owned by 51%, uh, you know, by BlackRock, let's say, BlackRock would have basically all of the say if they wanted to, uh, you know, let SoFi be bought out. But good thing for you guys, Vanguard Group is the largest shareholder and they only own 6.37%. So nobody has that level of say uh, on SoFi stock and you guys would more than likely be able to vote on that since a lot of retail does own the stock and nobody really has concentrated positions in a substantial way besides Vanguard, T. Rowe Price, BlackRock, but they're still relatively small position. So I don't really think SoFi is going to get bought out. There might be a bid thrown out there though. And that could be very good for the short term. If SoFi does get a bid, let's say for $15 or $12 or something, the stock would react very well to that. It would probably shoot up close to that in a very short amount of time. And then you'll get that period where SoFi either accepts the offer or it doesn't. But nonetheless, it would make for a very violent short-term event. And if you do hear a bid that comes out at like $12 or $15, I would be loading up on options for a quick short-term trade because those are great trades. I, I just actually played Spirit Airlines. Uh, it took 150 bucks into $5,000 within like two minutes because of the buyout news. Uh, quick trades are really good. So be on the lookout for that if it does happen. Overall, do I think it will happen? No. Is there good and bad with it? Yes. Now, what we are seeing coming out of SoFi Invest today, it looks like 13% increase in investor member trades and it says that's right active investing trades in the last 30 days have been well active invite friends to join too and get rewarded so a lot more people starting to use sofi especially once they introduce option trading i don't believe they have yet uh you know i kind of buy and hold stocks with the sofi platform so i don't, I don't really trade over there too much but once they get options here, I believe in the short term future, that's where you're going to see a lot more people more inclined to join SoFi Invest. And overall, I just want to point out again that these three directors leaving, I don't think it indicates to us at all that the business is doing bad. I, I, I actually think it could be the opposite. Maybe they don't want to sell. Maybe there is a buyout. There's a lot of reasons to it. Or maybe they just want to join their life. Or maybe they have a better offer somewhere else. All of that is very possible. But I will point out the buyout doesn't seem too crazy when you factor in um, all of the insiders that have been buying SoFi stock in massive numbers just back here in early March. If they were pursuing a buyout to buy a bunch of stock at these levels, uh, probably not a bad idea. I'm sure it's frowned upon with the SEC, but then again, a lot of things are. So it's interesting. Either they really believe in the business or they are pursuing a buyout with somebody or in some form of negotiation. So pretty interesting there. Just want to point that out there. You know, if, if SoFi stock did theoretically get a bid, it would likely be in between $15 and $20 per share because if you're going to lowball SoFi, we would never never let that vote go through and i don't think people would anyways but nonetheless that is really everything you guys need to know on that front as far as directors and the rumors for a potential buyout now now let's get into more of the regular stuff that we usually talk about like the option activity and you guys are going to love this look at the option activity 33 orders totaling 8.59 million dollars positive order value of 64 percent what on a day so far stock was down 7.77 percent that is a very good sign, ladies and gentlemen. Y you want to see that on a bad day like today, uh, comparatively to the opposite, right? You'd rather see 66% or 64% positive order value compared to 0% or, or something like that, right? So definitely a good sign here that 
institutions are stepping in and placing some option bets on SoFi stock even after this um yeah you know bad day that we did see today a lot of option activity for the 750 strike look at this one for june 17th worth a hundred and forty five thousand dollars a lot more for the 750 strike as well some puts some calls some of these for 2023 uh forty thousand dollars worth forty four thousand dollars worth thirty one thousand dollars worth so a lot of people are going long on sofi stock as far as options getting that leverage uh you know some are buying puts on it but overall a vast majority of the money that flowed flowed into options today from institutions was bullish now let's take a look at the uh short activity and you're looking at 17.21 percent short interest of free flow 124 million shares that are sold short cost bar max of 4.33 percent and the share utilization of 100 percent days to cover at 2.78 so still institutions don't want to lend out their stock that they own in sofi for 4.33 percent interest that does imply a potential bigger move to the upside so do keep that in mind it's a pretty big deal when the utilization stays at 100% for multiple weeks. I, I mean, it's it's been a long time since the utilization was under 100. So that is definitely telling you something. Overall, I'm very bullish on SoFi stock and this makes me want to buy more. Even if you did see a buyout, it's not going to come in less than $15 per share. So you're still going to make a lot of money even at these prices. If it does happen, again, I don't want it to happen. Don't get it confused here. This is not trying to spread FUD. I think this is an $80 stock in the next five years. My personal opinion there, not financial advice. Come to your own conclusions. Do the math on it. I think you'll come to the same conclusion that I do have. Now, if we do pull up the max pain for this Friday, for tomorrow, We'll go ahead and type it in. I seem like I never have this uh, pulled up when it comes time to record. But the max pain is $9.50 uh, per share by tomorrow. Obviously, it's not rocket science here. We usually end around the max pain more times than not. So that would imply a decent move to the upside uh, tomorrow. Option activity would also imply that move to the upside now as far as any potential news or catalysts that are coming out tomorrow we have vir virtually nothing we do have some commodity uh you know like wheat corn soybean reports that come out tomorrow but nothing too crazy wholesale inventories month over month and the wasde report uh you know economic data from other countries but that's not really going to move our markets in a substantial way the unemployment rate for uh canada that could be interesting but i don't expect it to be a dramatic effect on the markets we're still digesting what the fed has said as you guys already do know they are reducing their balance sheet by 95 billion a month it's not good but it's not as bad as it could have been so remember this when you're looking at a catalyst if it's bad and this goes for any catalyst if the news is bad the catalyst is bad but it's not as bad as it could have been the markets will almost always about 95 percent of the time take it as a bullish thing because it could have been worse right even if it's terrible even if cpi right we're expecting to come in at like eight percent or something high you know if it comes in at seven and a half percent it's not good but the markets would probably rally off of that because it's not as bad as it could have been coming in much higher than that, right? That's only an example. CPI data does come out next week, April 12th. So keep that in mind. As far as the interest rate, uh, Fed rate monitor tool projections, you're looking at 80.5% chance of that 50 basis point rate hike. That is a half percent rate hike if you don't know how basis points are. Uh, for the next meeting, May 4th, that comes in three weeks, five days, 20 hours, and 29 minutes from now. And at the June meeting, you're also pricing an 80.5% probability of another half percent rate hike. So rates are about to go through the roof. So keep all of that in mind. Nothing else too crazy did happen today. Uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman to sit on the Supreme Court, was actually confirmed today. And uh, that did actually send the markets up just a little bit, as well as you are getting new uh, sanctions and embargoes on like coal from russia nothing too crazy it is affecting the energy markets quite a bit and that does affect the stock market but it's not a huge deal uh when it does come down to it and it's not gonna be a long lasting effect for tomorrow what i would really watch out for is any news headlines from russia and ukraine and as far as the fed you're still in this digestion period so you're really waiting to see how the markets fully digest what the fed said if it's good or bad it's been kind of a neutral reaction 
we were down a lot today in the markets. We recovered. Same thing for yesterday. We fell initially really hard, and then we kind of recovered to where we were at to start the day. So we're not really getting a clear direction here. It looks like, and it seems like it will be a bearish response, but it's just too early to tell how market participants are going to take that. And I think tomorrow going to be another digestion day. I really think next week and over the weekend, that's when you're going to really see the full effects and how the markets feel about that Fed minutes report. So that is pretty much going to be all for this video. As far as SoFi stock, the key levels to watch for is obviously $10 per share. If we do get a buyout, uh, you know, this is a long shot here. It's probably not going to happen. But if we do get a bid thrown in, the stock would probably rip up above $10 per share. If that bid came in at $15, you'd probably jump to instantly about $13 per share. That is the resistance level that is forming up here. Rumors, they're not usually true, but sometimes they do have some merit to it. And I'm sure you guys can think of a lot of examples of that rumors that were just not true and then some rumors you heard about that actually came true think about cciv that's uh probably one of the biggest rumors that i can think of that was a rumor and actually came true so sometimes they're right sometimes they're wrong sometimes there's truth sometimes there's not but keep that in mind i wouldn't hold a a, a torch to it for a little a lack of a better word, but I do like to buy SoFi stock at these levels for the long term for a potential buyout for any reason at all. You know, for the same reasons companies would want to buy SoFi stock, you should want to buy SoFi stock as well. Obviously, not financial advice. You guys already know the deal there. We don't really have any levels of support at these levels, you know, because we've never been down here. So on 764, that was the low earlier in the day. Congratulations. If anybody was able to pick up some stock down there, you already made a decent return of about four to five percent. So pretty interesting. The MACD is now going bearish and the RSI is at 37.14 under that neutral level at 50. So we're definitely due for a bounce here. We'll see if that does come tomorrow. Nothing too crazy. That's going to be it. Let me know your thoughts, comments, or concerns down below in the comment section. Let me know if this kind of cleared up some of the concerns you guys have. There's unfortunately no definitive reason why these three board members have actually left SoFi. But again, it either comes down to they're unhappy with the way the business is being run or they're just unhappy with something specific that maybe Anthony Noda wanted to do or somebody else kind of being overwritten written right then people aren't don't like that right maybe they have a better opportunity maybe they don't agree with a potential buyout or they wanted the stock to get bought out there could be a lot of reasons but i don't think it really shows shadiness on the hand of sofi and i don't think it shows the business is doing bad uh quite quite honestly actually the opposite if they can get some better talent in there so that is basically going to be all for this video thank you guys for watching hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys have not already get this channel to a thousand subscribers thank you guys for doing that those of you guys that uh did just do that so that's gonna be all i will see you guys in the next one